Hey, what is up everybody? It's AJ here and in today's video, we're gonna see if you can do any video editing on the 2014 base model MacBook Air. Now, when I think of video editing in 2021, the base model MacBook Air, especially the 2014 edition, does not immediately pop to my mind. But I was sitting on the couch the other day and I thought, you know what, maybe I'm gonna see how this thing can actually perform doing some light video editing. My original thoughts would be, it's gonna be terrible, it's not gonna load anything, um, and I shouldn't even bother. But I loaded a few quick videos in there just to see how it would perform, and I was actually really surprised at how well it was handling and scrubbing through the tasks. So I figured why not try edit one of my shorter videos on here to see what sort of light editing we can do. The specs on this MacBook Air are a 2014, mid 2014 MacBook Air with four gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and it's even running on battery power right now, so it's not even plugged into charge. So we're gonna be using iMovie to give the MacBook Air a little bit of a chance because honestly, I think iMovie is optimized for this 2014 MacBook Air and it will be the best chance of getting any good performance out of it. To take any strain off the processor or the GPU, I'm actually gonna be recording using my iPhone screen. Um, so you can see what's happening without running any extra screen recording software. Of course, if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're in a supercharged way, you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, let's give this a go. So the first thing we're gonna do is import some media. I've got a file here on my desktop, so I'm just gonna grab the video one and of course the external audio one, drag and drop it into iMovie, and let these things load up. So they load up really quite quickly. Video one is of course me speaking to the camera and audio one is the screen recording as well as the audio that we need. And we're just gonna grab audio first and then we're gonna grab the video on top. You can see it pulls it in very quickly. So I'm very impressed at how smooth that is. If I'm gonna scrub through, if I'm gonna to jump to different bits and pieces, um, you can see the scrubbing is actually really smooth. This is recorded on an external camera at 1080p. Um, but even still, I'm really surprised at how smoothly it scrubs back. If I'm gonna do anything like right-clicking and just detaching the audio from both these files, you can see that happens in an instance really quite quick and a lot faster than I expected it to be. The initial impressions is it imports really quickly thanks to that SSD. Um, the scrubbing of this 1080p footage is really, really smooth. It's not a massive file, it's you know a couple gigs, it's uh, three minutes and 18 seconds, but even still, this device is almost eight years old and it scrubs really smoothly. You can even see here when I'm pressing in the, the space button to play and pause, it's really quick, it's just, it's perfect. I mean, this is really, really snappy. Cool, so that splitting is really cool, um, really easy. Let's add a title slide in here. So let's jump over to our titles. Even navigating through, you can see as I'm clicking from my media, nope, here we go, we've actually hit our first little bit of lag as we're clicking through. Let's see if it crashes or not. All right, our first hiccup. Um, it was actually going really smoothly until I started jumping between the media, the audio, and the titles page. So this can be a little bit frustrating depending on how often it happens and how long it takes. So that was a couple of, almost the minute while we waited for it to load and catch up. Um, not the worst, but that was our first actual stutter. Um, let's jump to the title page and find something that's nice. Um, I do like that iMovie for an inbuilt program gives you some really great titles and transitions. So adding in a title, um, there was no lag there. You can put it straight in, you can edit a title. It doesn't look great the way I did it, but just dropped in, edited, and it plays back really smoothly. It doesn't seem like there's any drop in frames at all. So we've got the intro sorted. I've got my top clip, then I've got my main clip down the bottom with the right audio. What I wanna do now is turn this top clip into a picture in picture. So I'm just gonna go over to our marker here, drop down from cutaway and go into picture in picture, and you'll see, instantaneously we have the picture in picture options there's no lag there and i can just move this around resize to where i want it to go and that's just super smooth um, we can change around the borders and the effects on it we can add a shadow if we want uh, can add a shadow no i'm not uh, maybe i'm going to add a color to it 
yeah, that, that looks good enough. But even still, I'm scrubbing through and picking the colors. It's really quite clear, quite easy. I'm happy with that. What I love is that we've got the playback happening right now and we've got both videos actually happening, the main video and the picture in picture, and they're both running really flawlessly. In the program I use DaVinci Resolve, when you do the picture in picture, even though I'm using on a much more powerful program, it actually lags a bit in, play, in playback unless I do a generated optimized media. Where on the MacBook here, even though it's seven years old, it's really just, it's smooth and I'm very impressed with how, how smooth it is. So the main bulk of the editing has been cut down. It's a really easy take, but the editing experience has been quite smooth. What we're gonna do now is drop in a transition for good effect just for the final clip. We're gonna pull in something like this fade to white, drop it in, and then let's see if it plays back quite smoothly or if it stutters. Let's play it back from here. Picture in picture on your desktop. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, you know the drill. Give it a so we didn't actually get to see the effect just then. I know it will play, but um, I guess it's a little bit more intensive on the computer than, than the title, but let's see if it works Picture now. On your desktop. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, so it, it does work. You might just get, have to give it a second or two to render. The last thing to do now is export this movie. It's only a minute and 34 seconds long. And given how well the MacBook Air has performed so far, I don't think exporting is gonna be much of a problem. What I love here is you can actually scrub through to check that your video is okay. You can actually change the resolution all the way to 4K. We're gonna to go to 1080p because that's what the majority of my videos are in. Um, it's 179.1 megs, so we'll call about 180 megs that we're going to export. Minute 34, and we're just going to go next. It's about 16 minutes for uh, exporting a 1 minute 34 clip. Um, so this is probably the biggest letdown so far, which is the actual export. For a device that's 7, 8 years old, I'm actually really surprised at how well it handled 1080p footage. Um, the footage wasn't massive. We had one video... Um, recorded on the camera that you're looking at and one screen recording with audio but the scrubbing on it was really quite smooth the transitions and the titles they loaded really quickly things like scrubbing cutting and um, moving things around was way way better than i expected it to be on a device this old and this really underpowered my overall conclusion is if you're looking at getting a device like the macbook air for video editing it wouldn't be my first choice but can you edit on the macbook air well, I think we've seen today that yes, yes, you can um, edit some small 1080p footage and it's actually a really nice experience. Of course, the downside is the fact that it does take a while for the export to happen. So you might want to plug it in uh, to charge and let it do the export while you go and play games, make a cup of coffee, whatever it may be, because it's taking about 15 minutes to export a minute and a half, which that only gets worse and longer, of course, the longer your videos are. If you guys like this video, of course, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're in a supercharged way you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.